Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm going to be giving you a little master class on how to use shapes in Excel. We're going to be going over how you customize them, how you create cool effects, just tips and tricks across the board, and really get you set up so you can do more interesting, engaging reports using some of these techniques. It's not as hard as it seems. All standard features. It looks crazy, but it's not as bad as it looks, I swear. So, before we hop in, I've got this new little carrier for my cat, so Gummy is going to be here with us, joining us today. That means I get to use both my hands now, too, because he's an older. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Let's jump right into it. So, the building block to all of this is just understanding how shapes work in general in Excel. So, essentially, it is just like PowerPoint. You go to your Insert tab, select whatever shape you want, drag and drop it in. And now once you got it in here, you're able to kind of start to look at it as a new layer being created. So Excel has layers just like PowerPoint. You can drop in shapes, images, text, stack them on top of each other. And when you create a brand new layer, it's right on top. And the furthest layer back is your actual cell grid where you actually have your spreadsheet where you're entering your data. This concept of layers is what's gonna enable basically everything else we do for more complex combinations of shapes. So it's really important to kind of just have that concept in the back of your head. Now, when we customize a shape, the two most common things we're going to be using are your fill and your line. Fill is whatever is going to be in the background of your shape, a color, an image, etc. And line is the outline around the outside edge of your shape. Uh, in this case, I've made it white so that you can see it here, this little line around the edge. When you first drop a shape in, it's going to have a fill and a line by default. Most of the time, I just remove the line. I just like to have my shapes by themselves, but if you do want to have it, have one, you can do a few things with it. You could just have it as a solid line. You could have it as a gradient line if you want to have it a gradient across it. And you can change things like the thickness of the line, or you can change the, like, if it's dashed, dotted, etc. You can even kind of make it look like it's hand-drawn. All sorts of little fun things in here. I think some of the most valuable tips I can give you are around each of these fill options. Solid fill is just one solid color like you see here. The thing people don't often realize is that you can make it transparent, which is a really useful tool if you just kind of want to make your colors feel mo more cohesive. If you're not a color expert, if you just drop in a really bright solid color like it gives you by default, maybe it won't match as much, but if you make it a little transparent, all of a sudden it feels like it matches our color palette a little better. Gradient is what I use the most. It is essentially a transition from one color to another color. There's a lot of different types of gradients. So you have like linear, radial, rectangular, and path. Most of the time you'll just be using linear. Linear, it has an angle associated with it. The angle is just what angle is the color going to be going across at. At this case, in this case, 90 degrees is straight up and down. 180 degrees would be straight across. Each of these little nodes you see here are the color on each side of your gradient. You can add extra nodes using the plus button if you want to add another color in there. You know, if you want to add one more step in the gradient, like you see here. And then you can hit minus on it to remove it. And then you can also change the transparency of each side and the brightness of each side here as well. The basic trick for gradients, I tell people, is choose colors that are pretty close to, to each other. Don't do two drastically different colors. It's not going to look very good. If I had a blue on one side and a bright orange on the other, this gradient is just a little, ugh, right? It's a little too much. But if we go back, we just do one blue to a slightly different blue. It looks a little bit better. Okay, you can also do a picture or texture fill. This is just a fun way to change your background. Any picture, if you copy it, go in here and hit clipboard, it is going to drop it into your shape as the background. And you can do pattern fills. These are essentially a pattern with two different colors in different styles. I don't use this very often, but I, there, I'm sure there is a time and place that might be useful for some folks. Now, there are some other customization options for these shapes. You're just not going to use them as often, probably. Right next to fill in line, there's this little icon here. And it's going to show you the option to add in a shadow. If you want to drop shadow, this is going to give you a little depth to your dashboard, make it look like it's uh, floating above things a little bit. You can also add in a reflection. I've never actually used this in a dashboard before, but in theory, maybe you want a reflection for something. You can add a glow. This is nice if you kind of want to add an emphasis to something or if you have a theme that has a little bit of glow to it. 
and you can do soft edges. Soft edges is just going to kind of blur the edges of whatever you've made or blur the edges of your shape. You might be tempted to go in and immediately use all of these. I wouldn't necessarily do that. Use them sparingly and in situations where they actually make things look better. Using all of these tends to make things look a little over the top, like these examples behind me that I made, these neon themes. They're fun, they're cool, they're not always right for necessarily a business presentation, but it still can be nice to use these sometimes when they're when it's appropriate. Okay, so we have a basic sense of how we can customize each shape in terms of background colors, outlines, and effects. Let's talk about some of the other little more fine-tuned changes we could make. So in many shapes, you'll have a little yellow dot like this. This is to change roundness. If I want this to be a pill shape, I make it really round. If I want it to be just a normal rounded rectangle, I make it smaller. Keep an eye out for those in shapes that you need to customize. If you don't see the customization option you need, you can go to the Edit Shape menu and hit Edit Points. This gives you very fine-tuned control over what you want your shape to look like. It takes a little getting used to, but it enables you to do all sorts of customizations and make all sorts of weird shapes if you want to. And really take the time to just scroll through all these shape options so you know what's there. There's more than you might expect. If you can't find the shape you want, you should also check out the icons button here. This is only going to show up if you're on Office 365 or Microsoft 365, but if you click it, you're going to have a big searchable list that's going to show up on the right here. Search for whatever you want. Let's look for an alien. If you click it and then hit insert, it's going to drop it in. Now, you can then edit this in a similar way to a shape, meaning you can change the color fill that it has, but you don't have as many choices. It's just you're, you're stuck with solid fills for this. You can change its transparency, etc. And if you want to do an outline, you can do an outline. You can give these drop shadows and stuff as well if you want to make them 3D and glows, all those types of effects as well. So when you see a cool effect like this, where it's like a shape with an image fill in the background, it looks really neat. This is typically just a shape with an image fill. So if we went to the insert tab, we found ourselves kind of like this hexagon shape. There's a hexagon. I'm going to hold shift when I drop this in. Shift is Holding shift is just going to make it uh, keep the same proportion. So essentially it's going to say, keep this the same height and width. And then if we wanted to, we could hold, click this little guy here and rotate it. If we hold shift, it'll kind of rotate it in different sections and then and then if we want to give this a picture or texture fill we can just go find a picture or texture that we want now something to keep in mind here the image is going to get skewed so if for example i have a uh, shape like this that's roughly square i should use a roughly square source image to drop into it if i use one like this where i'm dropping in an image that wasn't square you'll see it's a little bit stretched out and i would actually have to adjust the shape if i wanted the image to not look stretched that way or I could just crop my image first and drop it in and it would look right. You can do some tricks here using offset or the tile picture option, but I, I found that these can be a little confusing for people and cause some issues. So typically I just say start with an image that's roughly the same aspect ratio as the shape you're inserting it into. Okay, the next big one is organizing and aligning shapes so that they look nice and clean. So let's say we had three of these. I'm just gonna copy paste all this over. Okay, so we've got one for each of our aliens here, let's say, and we want to get these shapes all organized and laid out properly. What we can do is hold shift and click each of them. Under the shape format tab, we have a bunch of alignment options here. So if we go to align and we hit align left first, they're all going to align left. Then if we hit distribute vertically, they're all going to be evenly spaced between each other. And then if we take this and we say, all right, let's get our alien in roughly the right place on one and roughly the right place in the other, we can then do the same thing with our aliens. We're right clicking all of them, going to align, distributing horizontally, or excuse me, distrib <laughs> distributing vertically, and then aligning on the left. And now we've got a nice, perfectly organized set of rectangles. So there's not much I can teach you about this on video other than saying, go get a few shapes in your document and practice these a little bit. Experiment with all these alignment options just to get comfortable with them. It's gonna save you a bunch of time down the road if you do it early and just get familiar with it early. Uh, another little trick here, let's say you drop rectangles in, but you have sizes that are slightly different. One of them's not quite right like this. One option, obviously, is to just copy paste your shape and then you know it's the same size. But another is to click into your shape, go to this little icon here, and check the size. 
So we know this width is 3.61, so we can go to our other shape and adjust this to 3.61, and now it's a perfect match. The real fun stuff, in my opinion, comes in when we start layering things. Let's say we want to create a cool little alien kind of button layout here. So we've got our stuff in. Maybe I want to drop in a circle. And then I'm going to get my alien, right click and hit bring to front so that it shows up in front of my circle. Get my circle behind it. And then in this case, maybe I'm going to change the circle to be uh, no line. And we'll give it a solid fill that's like a transparent black like this. Get our alien centered on it. If we wanted to give it even more depth, we could even add like a little shadow or something like that. You can do a lot of fun stuff with this stuff. Another one I really like to do is add gradient fills to mask things off. So in this case, I needed my text to be readable over here. So I inserted a shape, it's just a rectangle, and the rectangle has a fill from one gray to another gray that matches this background color here. And on one side, it's totally transparent, so it masks things out. And this works because we can stack those shapes together. In this case, I've got a uh, image fill. This image fill is just a uh, rectangle with an image fill. I've made it pretty transparent, about 80%, and I've set it right on top of the rectangle behind it. And we have this cool little background image. In a lot of my work, you'll also see little gradients everywhere that are used to kind of separate things into sections. In this case, I've done a gradient from a sort of transparent black to a fully transparent black. And what that's done is it's created this little shadow you see behind me here, a little way to separate the page into different sections. In other cases, I'll just use the line option under insert. You can literally just insert a line. It's one of the first options here. And I'll use that to create different sections within my rounded rectangle so that it's easier to kind of organize the page and put everything into the right area. The options here are really endless. And one thing I tell people is find a PowerPoint you really like with some cool designs in it and just highlight the stuff in the PowerPoint and copy paste it into Excel to look at how it's built. You know, there's really no limits here. I mean, people see stuff like this and they think no way that that could be Excel. But it's just Excel, regular old plain Excel. And that's what this is really all about, is just encouraging people to start testing these out, using this as a tool for helping you communicate more effectively with your data or make more engaging, interesting reports. So I think that was enough for one video. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want copies of the templates, I have a free newsletter where I just send out templates. That's it. Uh, there's a link on my profile you can check out if you're interested in that. Thank you again for tuning in. Have a good one, and bye for now.